Imagine a farm where trees are integrated into the crops and are considered just as important as the annual crop, if not more important. An impossible scenario? Not with alley cropping. In this agroforestry practice, trees and crops are integrated into a farming operation to create a diversity of income sources. Alley cropping is broadly defined as planting rows of trees at a wide spacing, which creates alleyways where agricultural, forage, or horticultural crops can be produced. Alley cropping provides a variety of benefits to farmers. Dan Shepard has one of the oldest alley cropping practices in Missouri. Some of the benefits of alley cropping are is we get annual income off the ground while the trees are getting established. Also, we see a lot of wildlife out here with the trees too. While these crops are growing, we see deer, turkey, quail utilizing this ground and the trees. Paul Smith implemented a 20-acre alley cropping practice in northwest Missouri near Claremont. I guess I was a little hesitant at first to plant trees. I wondered at times what maybe some of my farmer friends and neighbors would think of uh, covering good bottom land with trees. My wife reminded me a few times that her father had spent his lifetime clearing this off and now we're planting it back to trees. In 1999, we seeded this field to orchard grass and alfalfa. The first cutting this year produced about three ton per acre. I feel that I benefit from the alley cropping because we have a short-term benefit of the crops between the tree rows, and eventually my family or someone else will benefit from the tree crop. Frank Thomas started his oak and hay alley cropping practice just a couple of years ago. I first got interested in the agroforestry program about three years ago, at which time we set out these trees. Before that, this ground had been row cropped to the point that the erosion was pathetic. We had many ditches that you had to pick your spot to cross. Now, with the help of the seeding it down, with the trees on the contour program, we now have all of this erosion under control. I feel this is a win-win proposition with the farmer, he gets some hay off the ground, and my children and grandchildren will have the benefit of a timber crop along with many different nuts that we have planted. Ron Heskett has an alley cropping practice on his Nebraska farm located just beyond the Missouri border. I've always had an interest in trees, and I was looking for something to give me a higher return per acre on my farming operation. So in the spring of 93, I got associated with the Nebraska Nut Growers Association. And through them, I learned the grafting technique, which you'll see here, this is the, the bench grafted trees. These are black walnuts. These were planted in the uh, spring of 97, so three years ago. I'm in a corn soybean rotation here. Every other year is corn and alternate with soybeans. I'm in a 60 foot spacing between the rows. There's 30 feet between the trees. Since my main purpose at this point in time is the uh, nuts off the trees to get the income right away, when the crowns of the trees begin to touch, I'm going to be eliminating every other tree within the row. Um, then I'm still going to maintain a nine foot fall log at the bottom of each of the trees so that future generations can utilize the income off of the saw log. Larry Harper, agricultural journalist and operator of Harper Hill Farms near Butler, Missouri, has practiced agroforestry since the mid-1980s. Alley cropping has been a part of our agroforestry system here at Harper Hill Farm since the beginning, since 1985. We've grown corn, soybeans, wheat, Christmas trees. In fact, the corn behind me is an open pollinated variety that's colored corn. We get as much as a dollar an ear for this. But probably the most profitable crop that we've grown over the years has been pumpkins. We've realized as much as $2,000 an acre for that crop. There are four benefits to alley cropping. First, the diversity enhances or adds income to your practice. Second, alley cropping improves crop production as trees contribute organic matter. Third, in alley cropping, trees create a windbreak that can protect crops. Finally, alley cropping provides conservation benefits. In order to receive the benefits you desire from an alley cropping practice, thought should go into the design. Planning the design of your alley cropping practice starts with identifying your production objectives, determining tree spacing, 
orienting your rows to obtain maximum sunlight, and creating a maintenance plan. Jean Garrett, director of the University of Missouri Center for Agroforestry, is a nationally recognized leader in designing and implementing agroforestry practices. Dr. Garrett has helped Missouri producers implement alley cropping practices for more than 20 years. The design of an alley cropping practice begins with identifying your objectives. Are you implementing an alley cropping practice to grow timber, nuts, or other products? For erosion control or to provide more wildlife habitat. Your objectives will determine how you plan your alley cropping practice. Tree spacing is critical. If you want to use trees to control erosion, trees within the rows need to be close together for a more immediate effect. Trees grown for timber may also benefit from closer spacing so they grow straight with less branching. However, for the best nut production, plant trees on a wide spacing. This allows for the development of a full, broad crown. How closely you plant these rows of trees will be determined by the crop you want to plant in the alley. If you want to grow a sun-dependent crop or forage, you need wider spacing because as the trees grow, the crowns get larger and begin to shade the alley. The more narrow the alley, the faster the tree canopy will close over it, creating shade. Once the alleys are fully shaded, you may have to shift to a more shade tolerant crop or forage. Your equipment may also dictate the widths of your alleys. You will want to make full passes up and down the alleys during planting and harvesting. For example, if you have a 12 foot wide planter, your rows should be in increments of 12 feet. Alleys of 48 to 60 feet are not uncommon when using this size equipment. Another factor to consider is orientation of the rows. That is, what direction do they run? To take full advantage of the sunlight, usually east-west is most desirable. However, if you have hilly land, planting on the contour will help prevent erosion. Trees will also require some maintenance. The most obvious is weed control, especially in the establishment stages to give the seedlings a better chance to compete. This is most commonly done using an herbicide around the tree base before the buds break dormancy in the spring. Next is fertilization. If you are growing your trees to produce nuts such as walnut and pecans, then fertilization is a very important part of the maintenance process. If you are growing trees for timber production, it may be less important but can still be very beneficial. Pruning is another maintenance consideration. When pruning for nut production, Prune just high enough for your equipment to pass below the large crown. However, if you are growing trees for timber, you will need to prune to a greater height to produce a high quality saw log. Thinning may also be necessary. How much you thin the trees in an alley cropping practice varies with species, site conditions, and management objectives. However, since growing low quality wood is not a goal in alley cropping, Timely thinning is critical. Your crown's opened up. Once you have a design for your alley cropping practice, you need to decide on the tree species best suited for your objectives and for the site conditions on which they will be planted. Dusty Walter, technical training specialist at the University of Missouri Center for Agroforestry, works with landowners implementing agroforestry practices. When deciding on what trees to plant, ask yourself the following question. What trees do well in my area? Consider growing conditions, such as soil and climate, as well as the potential markets for your product. Ideally, the tree species you select should be marketable. This includes both the wood itself and other products, such as nuts or fruit, which would give you another source of income. The trees should also be compatible with the companion crop or forage you choose. Some trees produce growth inhibiting chemicals, which affects what you can grow. It is also important that the trees be high quality and fast growing, or of such high value that a medium growing species is acceptable. Another consideration is the trees be deep rooted so that they don't compete with the crops or forage for moisture. Site tolerance, or how well a tree is suited to either a wet or dry site, needs to be taken into account. Ideally, the leaves should produce a light rather than a heavy shade. This will be especially important as the trees mature and the canopy closes. The lighter the shade that is produced, the longer you can grow crops or forages. And finally, 
you need to make sure that the trees are capable of providing the products you desire. For example, if you plan to grow trees for nut production, in most instances, you will be using grafted stock. If you desire nut products, such as walnuts and pecans, it may be necessary to graft your trees. Numerous cultivars of walnut and pecan are available that can guarantee high yields for the life of the trees you plant. This particular cultivar is quick crop cultivar. This is a, a bench graft, so my graft is down below the ground. And the reason for doing this is I hope to someday have a nine foot log here I can sell for lumber when it gets through the nut production. So this is the area your graft took place. Where you place the graft will depend on your objectives. Local resource professionals will be able to recommend cultivars for your area. If producing quality timber is your objective, it is important to understand the growth characteristics of the tree species you have chosen. Lonnie Messbarger is a resource forester with the Missouri Department of Conservation. He has worked with a number of landowners to implement their agroforestry practices. Tree species vary greatly in their growth response when planted in open conditions. For example, walnut trees planted in a single row get a lot of sunlight. This causes their branches to spread, creating a broad canopy. If nut production is your goal, then this is desirable as more canopy equals more nuts. However, if your end product is a veneer or saw log, less light is desirable. With a lot of light, trees grown for timber production will require intensive pruning. So how can you control a tree's response to light if you want to produce a veneer or saw log? Some alley cropping practices are designed where trees of different species and less responsive to light are grown on either side of the desired species, creating a triple row of trees. The center tree is trained to produce a straighter, higher value log because the trees on either side produce enough shade as the center tree grows to prevent extensive branching. Choosing the correct trainer species is important because you do not want the outside trees to outgrow your center tree. If they do, they will provide too much shade. The short-term success of any alley cropping practice is determined by the combination of trees and crops planted. Agronomist David Lindell worked with landowners for more than 20 years through University of Missouri Outreach and Extension. The choice of companion crops varies depending on the type of trees selected. There are five major groups of crops that can be grown in any alley cropping practice. One group is cereal or row crops. Forages are another group. Specialty or medicinal crops are also grown. Horticultural crops are possible. Finally, you might consider biomass crops. Eventually, as trees mature in an alley cropping practice, the shade in the alley will increase. The rate at which this happens depends on how wide the alleys are spaced. This will require shifting to a more shade tolerant crop in the alleys. Dan Shepard talks about pecan trees that he and his father planted. 30 years ago we planted the seedling pecans 35 feet apart in the rows and that gave us a chance to farm between them. We were able to raise row crops of soybeans, wheat and corn. Since then these trees have all been grafted and now they're starting to mature and canopied over. Now we're in complete solid nut production with this grove. Because there are a number of combinations of trees and companion crops, it's a good idea to check with your Agricultural Extension Service, Natural Resources Conservation Service, or State Forestry Office to ensure that your proposed plan does indeed optimize your economic gains. Alley cropping is a useful practice for farmers seeking income diversity and conservation benefits. Income is provided in the short term by production in the alleys. Longer term income is provided by the trees and tree products trees also have a positive conservation effect. In other words, alley cropping is an ideal practice for production and conservation benefits. For more information about alley cropping, contact the University of Missouri Center for Agroforestry. Additional information is available from the National Agroforestry Center. Your local Natural Resources Conservation Service, State Forestry Service, or University Extension Office may also have information. 
This video has been produced and funded by the University of Missouri Center for Agroforestry within the College of Agriculture, Food, and Natural Resources. Thank you.